And what's poppin', man? You already know it's your boy, Mr. J Hill. Conversation series. Um, super, super uh, special guest in the building. Uh, I ain't gonna fuck up this one. Um, <laughs> Mr. Carl Crawford is in the building. What's up? What's up? What's good, dog? What's going on? Um, my fr what I wanted to ask you, uh, just looking around, I come in here. First of all, you opened up the spot to me. I want to say thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. Um, so a lot of niggas. Yeah, yeah, a lot of niggas ain't doing that. It, Southern hospitality ain't so hospitable nowadays. Depends on who you who you who you dealing with. Like I come to Atlanta, and these everybody is just fucking uppity and just like what happened to Southern hospitality. I don't know. This is Atlanta. I'm, I'm from Texas. You know, we come down there. We try to roll a red carpet out for all our out of towners. You know what that. I'm saying? We take them out. We show them the city. We try to show them love. We feed you. We do all that type of shit. Yo, so um. Since we've been hospitable, yeah. can I be hospitable to you, my brother? Sure. Let's take this shot. Let's get it. Yeah. You got to pour your, that wonder to close, man. You got to pour your own poison, though. Big. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, yeah. you know, where I'm from, men pour their own poison. Likewise. Yeah, I got you that. I got you that. Like, we're going to take a shot to uh, Southern, Southern hospitality still right. being hospitable. That was a that was a hard one. <laughs> I got that shit. Casa Frico, that's what we call this. Casa Frico, Casamigo, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> we got it. All right, so um, I want to talk to you about like first of all, I, I I pull up to the crib. Um, you got the artist in here. You got the sprinter outside, and I want to ask you, how does it feel? You know what I'm saying I feel like um, you've been doing this for. Maybe what five six years now since two thousand and sixteen. Okay, so yeah. what like what's that like six? You know what I'm saying like two thousand eighteen is when I really have to okay. like do all this stuff right here. Two thousand sixteen okay. was more like the building the foundation phase. So we're like eight. Uh, nah, just really like 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 four. Let's know? count it: 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. All right, I was so right. You got to take time. out like two years because like the first so four two years. years. Yeah, first okay. two years was just us building the foundation. You know what I'm saying? How does it feel, right? Like um. I was speaking to somebody and they was like, yo, who you got an interview today? I'm like, call Crawford. And he was like, yo, that's a good interview. <laughs> the people that know, know. You oh, get what I'm okay. saying? Yeah, and yeah. when I think of people like that, I think of the uh, the people that's in the industry that people might not know, like, uh, let's say a whole vein, uh, yeah. um, I don't know, uh, um, a Leo Cohen. Right, you get what right, I'm saying? I'm thinking right. of the people that. Yep, because those people know. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> you feel yeah. me? But now you're amongst them names. How does it how does it feel to be in amongst these conversations now? I mean, it's cool to be in the conversation. You know, those guys are so far ahead of me, you know, they so I could never just be mentioning like stuff that they've done in, in the business. But it's just nice to know that uh, you know, people um know what the real about everything. And I'm a realist, so I'm all about just the truth, you know, no lies and you know, having like an honorable name. Mm. So you had to of course though, um, I mean, shit, we might as well just go ahead and talk. Yeah, we might as well just go ahead and address the elephant in the room. But I've been like, I feel like, God damn it, is it still an elephant in the room? This has been an elephant for like it's three years now. elephant in the room because they keep dragging it. They don't want to <laughs> like end it. They, were, you know, they've been trying to drag me through the mud for so long. And it's like, it's like I'm, the, I'm like the little leprechaun that just keep just keep popping up, won't go away. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um, at the end of the day, it's all about just uh, me just trying to like stay firm in what I'm doing. Yo, first of all. All right, it's it's so many things to talk about. Cause, <laughs> wait. All right, major league baseball player. Right. Not just like a the, the regular major league baseball. No, because you can't be you can't be <laughs> black and regular. In the yeah, it's league. not just regular. So let's not right. get. If you don't know, you can find out. But major league baseball player, star at it, really good at it. You was able to build this empire in fifteen oh one. This independent record label. Right. You got to go to court with Megan Thee Stallion. Right. Because of the situation that happened. It's been three years now. Right. You're still in... Still in court. Yeah, we still, still in, Yeah, man. Uh, I think February is our next hearing. But, you know, it's like the powers that be. It's like they playing this cat and mouse game with you. They push it. Every time it comes close to, like, the date, something happens. We got to push it back. So they've been doing this for years now. And it's to kind of, like, to suck you out of all your bread or whatever. Yep. To make you quit, give up. And then they take over everything. That's what but, I So that's what's going on. And, uh, you know. That's what, you know, we here fighting. And for guys like me that's in my position right now, you know, it stands for something. So 
if I was to, you know, uh, succeed or, you know, um, uh, you don't have a good outcome, this represents, like, a lot of people that's going through this. Yo, that's what I want to talk about, right? Yeah. Like, we're going to talk about the Megan Thee Stallion shit. We're going to talk about all of that shit that media looking for. But I want to talk about the importance of having your own money, right? right? Being able to go as, a, as an African-American, though, right? right? Like, mm -hmm. being able to go to court with these people because so many times we see people take you to court and mm -hmm. what they do is, if you got a good lawyer, they try to flex their pockets. Not even flex their muscle. They try to flex their pockets. Yeah. And what happened is, every time there's a court case, they try to push it back. Why? Because man. you got to pay for them lawyers. Yeah, right? man. Like, I mean, you go against the powers that be, man. They got the lawyer on a whole pension for the next five years. You know what I'm saying? So they not even, like, worried. They, like, just, you know, whatever. And it, at the end of the day, it's just all about, like, egos and stuff like that. It has nothing to do with wanting to see the next person succeed, you know? So at the end of the day, I just have to, like, like I say, keep doing what I have to do to keep my catalog or my artists or fight for what's right and just uh, clear my name that's, that was, you know, put out there as I was a... Gave bad contracts, or I stole money, and all this type of stuff. So, you know, I I wanna I wanna I wanna clear my name. Hey, first of all, <laughs> I just wanna say as an interviewer, right? I appreciate you being so open to talk about it because right. sometimes you don't, it, people don't want to talk about things. So I appreciate that. Right. But I promise you, we're gonna get to that. But right now, it's it's bigger than that. And what I mean by I'm talking about like people our color, right? right. We, like we really at a at a war against yeah. fucking life. You get what I'm saying? Right. And and what I wanna talk to it right now is, is just talk to me about you know the importance of having your own money and if you had any advice for somebody that's going through some some legal situations and they might not they can't um afford the lawyer or they see their people that's that's suing them or, or they're going to court with is keep pushing it back keep pushing it back if you had any advice what would, advice would you give them Really, it's just tough because this is a, a real tactic that they use, and they usually win. You know what I'm saying? But the advice I'll say is, if, you know, um, if you can't, you know, hopefully you have rich friends. Maybe, maybe you can go to the bank and get a loan mm. or do stuff like that. Or, you know, if you really believe in what's gonna happen, you know, you might have to sell off a few things or something. I'm not sure because I haven't been in those positions. But for me. Uh, I just know that um, you should just try to do anything you can to keep that ownership. You know, it's important that we keep the ownership once we have it, you know. So, you know, I'm owner, I'm owner, owner of the catalog. I mean, part owner of the Megan Thee Stallion catalog. We want to keep that by any means, you know. Mm. And it's, it's crazy because, like, you know, a lot of times we see people, they lose just court cases, like, off of plea deals. Because, right. again... It's like, man, they're not going to go to court. Let's do the plea deal. You right. know what I'm saying? They're going to they're gonna take it. Even even right. in the criminal justice system where people are really getting to yeah, doing well, time. Yeah, they, they, they wait till you can't get, you know, afford it no more. And then, yeah, you just want to make sure you don't lose out. Because, you know, once the money is gone, the game is over. You don't get nothing. So, uh, it's like you want to take a plea deal because you're afraid you're going to lose everything. But in my case, you know, I'm willing to take that gamble because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we found that. We nurtured it. We made it to what it was. And... Uh, you know, now they you supposed to get compensated for that, and uh, they trying to do the opposite. One hundred percent. Let's yeah. talk about it then. Um, Megan Thee Stallion. Uh, she was signed to the independent label, uh, fifteen to one, before she was signed to Rock Nation. Right. Of course. Um, you guys came. Uh, you was able to like put her, put her in a position where she can afford a lot of the things that she wanted. You was able to give her a, um, a ten thousand dollar bonus yeah you know what i'm saying even that people might look at it on the outside in you know already being successful like ten thousand dollars is nothing right yeah ten thousand dollars is nothing to you that got it right, right? i want to talk to you about um just these these certain deals that people take i want to talk to you especially about not saying that you was you gave her a 360 deal but let's start there yeah. right let's start we, we, a, we gave her a 360 deal because we 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 like did some unorthodox stuff in the contract that you normally wouldn't do for us like the profit splits and stuff like the 40%. that well, yeah where well, the artist would never see nothing like that so a lot of stuff like that and um we gave away in 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 exchange for the 360 deal so it's like it was it was like both sides was happy you know but um of course when she blew up they all want to say oh you looking to do this you know and stuff happens but when i when i met megan she was staying in a one bedroom apartment you know what i'm saying just just getting by, you know, and all of a sudden, um, I didn't do nothing or whatever the case may be, you know, but, you know, you agreed to it because at that point in time, well, no, Rock Nation wasn't right there about to give you this deal, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, I was, I, where was they at when it was that time in your life, you know? Yo, what, for the people that don't know, because uh, we hear so much in the media, but I'm pretty sure it's some people out there that don't even know what a 360 deal is. What, what does that mean? 
it just means it's like you get a percentage of everything that they do. You know what I'm saying? Like for for shows, uh, endorsements, contracts, stuff like that. You know, you just get a percentage of pretty much uh, everything they're involved in. A lot of people don't understand though is a gamble too because you know, a lot of people gamble. We talking about um, shit. We see all type of gambling apps now. We see gambling get being legal in so many different states. And people take these gambles every day, but when it comes to their career, a lot of times when you come from nothing, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? A lot of people don't speak on this, right? Because we, it's, it's easy to see it when they make it. But mm -hmm. there's so many people that didn't make it that's like, yo, bro, I will gamble on myself. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. I, I don't have shit. Like, I can't, like you said, mm -hmm. when you met Megan Thee Stallion, she was pretty much hum humble beginnings. You get what right. I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I'm going to gamble humble. on myself. <laughs> so it's like, a lot of people make fun of these 360 deals, but yeah. honestly, it's a lot of people came from it. Yeah. You feel me, Jay-Z? A lot of our favorite I mean, artists came it's from because it. because you're putting so much money up, you have to get something get your money from back. it. Yeah, like you have to, you know, get the return on your investment. People don't understand that. You want us to just put all this money up behind you because you think you fly, you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, what happens if it fails? Now, I wasted all my money. I don't, I lose, you know, but I guess it's okay if you consider a person who has money already. Oh, he got money. It ain't gonna, you know, he ain't gonna miss it. Ain't no big deal. And that's what they say when they actually get it. Oh, man, he got his money already. Why he wanna take this and that? It's like, no, what you mean? We signed the deal, a contract. This is how America works. You know what I'm saying? You sign paper, you have to abide by it. Let's talk about the contract for a second, right? right. Um, I think you had, what, uh, five album? Uh, four albums. Four, four album yeah. contract. Yeah. Um, when, when things like that happen, right? Right. You first start, everybody's happy. Like, oh my God, it's a blessing. Thank you right. so much. Yeah, we now, all on cloud nine. <laughs> now, right. Uh, build an enemy, you know, rival enemies, you know, and it's like for nothing, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, when her mother, when her mother passed away, it was it, it let other people just come in and take over and just kind of like steer it things the wrong way, you know. I ain't gonna lie. Um, not not talking on like a person that's dead or whatnot, but when when her mother was there, you know, everything was running good. Mm -hmm. And then when she passed away, that's kind of like when things kind of went left for 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 me. You know so, what I'm saying? So sa yeah. saying that though, right? Right. I think that's good. Like, of course, we're not speaking no bad because um, I know they get upset. They like, oh, you, you, how dare you talk about her mother? Today? I'm not trying to say nothing bad about her mother. No, of course. Because you know, uh, I mean, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, when she passed away, to me, that's when things started to change. And I wanna. I want to stay there for a second, right? right? I think um, does that make does that make you more empathetic of the situation? Because again, yeah, like when your mom's is there, everything is good. But right. as so many other people, right. fuck the race shit, right? Because well, like yeah, if, when our parents is there, we feel good. When we lose a parent, we see yeah. it with Kanye West. Like, we well, yeah, she was she was going. a real G. She didn't really let like little stuff come around. I just I just think she wants she because her mother was prepping herself to be her manager. Mm. So the guy that was actually ended up managing her. You know what I'm saying? I, I think she, T. Ferris, yeah, I yeah. think she would have like smelled him like, you know what I'm saying, real good. Even though he goes around and tell everybody, oh, she loves me. He told me to watch her. At some point, she was the type of woman I think she would have kind of sniffed out how he was. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, with that being said, you know, uh, he's a guy who took advantage of people's vulnerabilities in their life. And he was able to get in and cause all the stuff between me and Megan. You know? mm, does yeah. that? But her losing her moms, right? Because, of course, the situation is like even dealing with this for three years now. Right. Shit is irritating, shit is fucked up, shit is any type of annoying you wanna look at it, right? Mm. But when you look back and you be like, you know what, man, she lost her moms, um, does that make you more empathetic of the situation? Yeah, because I know things would have been different if her mom was here. You know mm. what I'm saying? All the stuff, all this trouble, all this stuff she getting into, she would I don't think you guys would have seen none of this stuff happen had her mother still been here. She has a guy that's just right there to just kinda get what he can until, you know, stuff runs out. And, uh, you know, you don't care about her getting in trouble and stuff. You know, you didn't hear about her getting into no stuff like this when she was with us, you know. So everything is after, you know, they stopped dealing with 1501. <laughs> Yo, how hard is it to, um, and this is what we got to be careful with, right? Um, how hard is it to try to hold her accountable for her actions, being that she's a woman? And I, and I say that treading lightly because in today's age it's like we can't as you men, can't we say, can't nothing. say nothing yeah you know you can't argue with a woman you know they can say what they want to you and then you say something back oh you arguing with a bitch oh you arguing with a female what type you know all that type so you can't say nothing but um at the end of the day you know um I just, I just, you know, I just look at it for what it is. I don't blame her because she didn't know nothing. She was new in the game, just like I was. You know, the people behind her. You know, what I'm saying, I, you know, they got in her head and just made her like this person that you know everybody don't like today. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, that's what it is. Yo, what about this though? And I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna say it. You don't have to say it. Um, right. 
we can't ignore the fact that Megan Thee Stallion has been in a few situations now. Right. Right. Um, we see the we see the Tory Lanez thing. Right. Um, we can't take no sides, but we I feel like the we see what the media is saying. Mm-hmm. Right. I feel like um her being in so many situations, it doesn't support her argument with you or, or her track record doesn't support her argument with you. Do you ever lay down at night and be like, man, what goes around comes around like it was bound to happen? I don't know. I don't know what's bound to happen to her because Megan is a person that we just all seeing and learning and seeing these things and stuff keep happening. All I know is that, you know, you can't keep doing everybody the same way. You know what I'm saying? You can't keep, uh, you know, just, you know, causing... Be it you, if it's like what my thing is, wherever it's smoke is fire, mm, you know what I'm fact. saying. So, you know, if you just even if you didn't have nothing to do, you always just kind of tangled up. You always, you something always happening, like it's something there. I can't say exactly what it is, but it's something, you know. You, I, I don't know if it's the PR doing it to make you know to sell records at times, but what, but to me, it just seemed like you know, it's just it's just always something at a moment of time when y'all was going through the situation. I think it was three years ago. Uh, some would say that that could have been a, a promotional tactic to what's that a rollout? What's that the, a rollout? The oh my god, they well, they, I, they, I, they, I, they not let me get yeah, on my contract. Yeah, I honestly feel right? like they tactics is to like beef with some dude right before the project's about to come off. You know this, you know, it's always uh, something. And right after that, a project come. I got to the point where I'm like, oh, they they talking, they cranking it up with me again. It must be a project about to come out or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But um, definitely the first time, I don't know for sure. You know, we did stop the music, but it was because you know, um, whenever people see her music get stopped, it's because we trying to like remind them that it's an obligation going on that she still hasn't attended to. You know, and uh, that's why you see certain things happen. But um, you know, the first time, I don't know. I was surprised to see when she came out and said all that stuff the first time. Mm. You know, and then I'm I'm looking at the video and I'm just seeing all these lies in it. And I'm just like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, people don't people don't even, like, care to see if it's true or not. It's just because she's the biggest star. It's, it's supposed to be true. It's crazy, you know what I'm saying? So it's like um, I just, I just got a real uh, sense of how people really act to stuff when... Um, you know, like somebody who they think is famous says something. Yeah. Would you say so? I mean, again, I mean, it is what it is, bro. Yeah. Like the, the 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 shit is written down. It's on social media. It is what it is. Would you say Megan Thee Stallion is misunderstood or is just she's a liar? Like, I mean, I'm just asking real shit. Well, in my case, she's a liar. You know what I'm saying? Because. Like I said, all the stuff they said about me, bro, I didn't even, I could tell you, like, up to the point where she, hun, we supposed to split up and had a problem. The crazy part is I never knew we had a problem. Mm. That's the problem. You see, that's how how much of, a, of a, a sneak attack it was to me. All the way up to, you know, the, we supposed to split ways. I never knew we had a problem. You know, I've, I've never told Megan no ever you know what i'm saying like everything was just 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 you, whatever man you gotta be careful that you know nah, what they say bad, when they can scratch that head they lying yeah nah nah this is this is public <laughs> record you know what i'm saying nah. I never told her no for nothing you know what i'm saying but uh you know i was just like shocked just as anybody else by it. like damn you know yo being an owner of uh 1501 man how, how frustrating is it because like you said right. a lot of times and i think i heard you say this before a lot of times it'd be situations going on that, that probably hasn't even gotten to you that you don't even know. And like then what? Get, like, for example, the Megan Thee Stallion situation, I think she had put something publicly out there and like, yeah, I didn't even know this. Yeah. Oh, you mean like when she went viral? Yeah. I mean, when she went live and started saying, yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm just like, yo, they like, yo, she blasting you on the, on the thing. She talking about uh, 1501 and all. I'm like, damn. You know, yeah, because we stopped the music for the first time. That's the only thing you care about is the music and the internet. You know what I'm saying? What made you stop the music? Cause you know we, we in a legal we in a legal situation. And that where, moment, th- well, three years ago, it yeah, was, and they was just ignoring all our letters that we okay. writing back to them. They was just not knowing it. We trying to get this stuff settled. You know what I'm saying? But she's like listening to her people or whatever, and they just not knowing. It. So of course we have to do something to get you to, to like try to get you to like work with us. But you know you don't you don't you don't hear that. You don't hear nothing until that music is stopped. Then right. it's oh they stopping my music. You the worst person like, in the world. Yeah. Oh my God, cause but you, man. We got this contract. We trying to finish up so we can get done over here, so we can like, so I can 
move on with my life. And, uh, you know, you acting like it's not over there, you know. And I know, you know, it's her team or whatever because she clearly don't know shit about that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So um, we just, um, you know, it is what it is. So playing devil's advocate again. Uh, right. Every time we hear in Rock Nation, we hear positive things. We hear what Jay-Z doing with the uh, reform thing. Right. We hear uh, how they giving people their messages back. We hear how uh, even the title situation with that's making more money than fucking the iTunes and YouTube and shit like that. Right. Given that situation, do you, are you, can you really get upset with them or are you like more empathetic with them as well? Because if a woman came to you, right? right. And I think, again, just playing devil advocate. If a woman came to you and they, and they pose a problem, I feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, as a man, what we're going to do is try to take fix care the problem. Of them, right. yeah, and take care you. of the woman. Right. So like, is there any animosity between you and Rock Nation? Like, do you the feel like The thing is with me you? with that, right? Okay, yeah, you're right about that. But at the end of the day, when you done dug in, you did show who right and what, and you see what's going on, that's your obligation. Don't shut it down, bro. Okay. But they don't like to take no type of losses. You know what I'm saying? No type of public losses. That's why you said everything is always positive. That's not, that's by design. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it's like they don't like to take nothing. So in this case, you know, the big bad guy who was supposed to did all this bad stuff, um, you kind of found out that I'm not the person who you are. And you know what I'm saying? It's time to like just say what happened so we can move on. But it's like they won't let go of that. We in court about some some shit that, you know what I'm saying? They already know is mine, you know? And it's just like we just going to drag it along just to drag this guy through the mud. They've been like just making everything as difficult for me as possible. So... Uh, I just go through it because I've I've come from a tough upbringing. Like what they don't understand is that I've where I come from is like you know so you just making me tap back into those you know My ways roots. Yeah, yeah and I'm just going through it because that's all it is. I understand yeah y'all got the big powers the money and you can drag me as long as you want. So what can I do other than just take it until y'all done? But what I like, <laughs> I mean honestly, what I like it yeah. is I like it's like nigga like y'all got the money, but I got the money too, nigga like. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, I just, like, I don't never, like, say all that stuff because it's just, like, man, it's, like, why are we even going through this, bro? Y'all know this thing. They can they can do something and make a call or whatever. This can be over with tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? It really don't have to be, like, going on like it is right now. It's just all about trying to, like, drag me through whatever it is they trying to do. So know? let me ask you this. So y'all got the – all right, so y'all got this in writing. They're not answering your calls, so you stop the music because they're not paying you no attention. Like, y'all not – I need y'all to listen to what the fuck I'm saying. Right. But if you got it in writing, right, why stop the music? Because if you got four if you got four albums in writing, once you drop that next album, I'm recouping that bread from it. Or yeah, how does that it's work? Just, it's just, it's that, that's all the same. We still do that. They still drop the one. Either way it goes, we like you said, when a judge, when a judge allowed the music to go, all that stuff you just said still happens. You know what I'm saying? We stopped the music. Um, so why stop it if you still gonna get the money anyway? Well, we stop it because we know that's the only thing that kind of would get their attention. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's the only thing they well, go. And I guess I'm sorry. I'm and we trying to like get this out the way, you know, so we can just do business. Nobody wants to keep going to court paying these lawyers. Every that's the lawyer game. They the one winning. You know what I'm saying? So it's like just imagine just going to court every month. You know what I'm saying? Just running up a bill. You know. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to understand because, excuse me, if I don't, I'm just, I'm really trying to understand before the lawyers are involved, right? Right. I'm assuming, like, right, you're trying to get their attention, you're trying to talk to her, they're not talking to you. So, like, no, this, a- this, 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 this was when you said before the lawyers involved? Yeah. Yeah. So, we didn't have a, we never had a talk before the lawyers was involved. You know, they, they just straight went to the lawyers with me. Okay. So, they wasn't trying to, Pay no. you from the albums that was no. going to be dropped. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, so I guess still, no, no, not, even that, not even that. It's the ancillary side. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they didn't want to pay me for none of the shows. Like, like for instance, I haven't, okay. got, I haven't got paid. I saw for, like 30%. I haven't got paid for one show since 2019. Okay. So you know what I'm saying? This girl doing three, four hundred thousand a show, bro, for two, three years. And I think he was doing what? 30% of that, right? Or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think. So as soon as she got with Rock Nation, they stopped paying me. You know what I'm saying? They just shut everything down. Okay. Okay. Like okay. everything, so you you got to think of all the endorsements she done got, all the, all the stuff. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like they just they just said, nah, we ain't paying you. Fuck that. And they saying, you know what I'm saying? I think, and they, <laughs> their their stance is that it's an unfair contract. Yeah, it's an unfair contract. But I mean, when I'm you know? confused because like if any other time when it got when it's dealing with us right. black people, when I say us, when something isn't writing, 
is yeah. in writing. Yeah. So I'm thinking if they got lawyers involved, shit, you want the upper hand because it's in writing. Yeah, you know, but they we can't get to the court date. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> we're trying sense. to get to the court All date. Right. That makes you know sense. what I'm that talking about? We can't sense. get we've been they've been avoiding this shit for three years. Yo. Yeah. Um <laughs> Since we here, fuck it. Like, since we here, fuck it. Like, I, I was trying to say this yeah. the last, but since we here, uh, Erica Banks. Right. Um, I'm pretty sure you see is, is things on the internet. Some people say you could have took more time with her. You could have, uh, I don't know, groomed her more. Uh, what do you think about that? I think, shoot, she just, she still, she still grooming. See, this is the thing. Every girl that I signed, they want to compare them to Megan. You know what I'm talking about? So. Megan did it quick and got up there quick. Everybody can't go to that same That's not pace. life. Yeah. That's just not you know life. What I'm saying? She, <laughs> she's grooming. She's doing her thing still. So it's like. Can we take another shot, bro? Come yeah. On, you know what I'm like, saying? Talk some good shit. Let's take another shot. Let's take another drink. But like, not for real. Because I say take a shot because people don't understand. Life ain't just you start <laughs> rapping, you get on the mar. Some people are blessed. Some people are fortunate. That's not life. That's yeah, not real like, life. That's like, not reality. Like you want to compare everybody to Megan. Everybody is not going to be on the same place, Megan. Erica is still developing as an artist. She's still that putting bullshit, out music. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga said, look at your girl. Yeah, uh-huh. But no, that's, that's, that's your yeah. Life. yeah. But, I mean, at the end of the day, what would you expect, though? Let me say that's your biggest artist that you had had in she, history. You know what I'm saying? We we can't expect nothing. Else. The fact that I brought two artists back to back that fast, gold platinum records. Come on, bro. Like like what y'all want me to do? She just got a platinum record. Like, what more do you want? From <laughs> you know me? what I'm talking about? Like, 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 what yeah, more do you want? You know what I'm talking about? Like shit, we brought you another platinum record when you told me that I wasn't gonna do it again. Mm. You said I have never have an artist at red carpet events, no platinum. Bro, we come back a year later with a fucking, you know what I'm bank, saying? She just got signed. Well, so, not to want him. To want yeah, So it's like, shit, bro, what y'all, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say, man. It's just like whenever I, they just want to find something, you know what I'm saying? But Erica, it's fine. What do you, what, what is the, all right, so when you sign to somebody, because I'm not a uh, label exec or anything like that, right? right? So I don't know. I'm assuming if I'm signing somebody from an independent, um, at an uh, independent label, my goal is to get you signed to a major because that's a lot of artists want that. Right. I'm, I'm the pipeline to the majors. That's so what I want to be. Is that your goal? Yeah, that's what I am. I want to be, you know what I'm saying? That's what I've been doing. That was my plan from here all along. You know, it was always to be, to come home to Houston, help all the local artists get, you know what I'm saying? Be who they were. I knew at some point, Megan was, I would hope that she was going to be a star and we move on. Like, she got to go. You know, I understood all that, but I didn't think that they was just going to like try to shit on me like that. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, Yo, this, I understand it. Okay, I'll get you to a certain level. You go to the majors. Wham, y'all. You go and have a beautiful career like you like you doing. Yeah, that's my job. It's not. It's not my job. I wasn't planning on staying with you forever. You know. So is it is it fair yeah. to say when people talking Erica Banks, right? Right. He could have groomed her more. Right. He could have put more time in her. Is it fair to say you did your job because you got her? You did what you did for her. Got because her signed what, to amazing. Exactly, and then what they gotta understand is like we did more with Erica than we did with uh <laughs> what we did with Megan. So we did what we had to do. You know what I'm saying? We just kept kept grooming. You know we did. We worked with what we had. You know what mm. I'm saying? So shit. what about? Hey, so I've seen, and this, and this is why I've actually seen um, one of your other artists. <laughs> I was doing some research or whatever, and I seen people talking about this girl, and the name was. Martina Snow. That's what I seen. Right. Right. And I heard people saying, well, first of all, let's get that straight. It's not Martina Snow. Right. It came from a picture and the blogs took that and they ran with it. Right. It's actually um, Martina Mar- Say it. Marie. Marie. Yeah. Right, let's make sure. I was waiting. I was, I was going to see if she looked, Marie. but she was, she's capping like she's Martina like, she Marie. paying attention. She, whatever. But it's Martina Marie. So um, for people that's out there and they saying, it's like you're trying to replace Megan so bad, right? They say you you brought on Erica Banks to replace Megan. Now you brought on Marti- Martina and every as the blogs would. And before that, and before Erica, they said the girl I signed, Kayona Lisa, was supposed to be Megan. Right. So I like, can't win. It's like you know what I'm saying. When you, you see make, that, how you know, does that make you feel in those moments? Well, once I realized, that, oh, okay, 
Because I'm bringing girls that ain't nothing like Megan. Maybe Erica was a little bit because we all from Texas. But Kayona was nothing like Megan, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, they started saying that type of stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is just going to be the MO. I don't need to worry about it. Because at the end of the day, I don't see major labels getting upset because, you know, they got Sweetie at this place or Doja Cat at this place. Like, ain't nobody getting mad at them for signing another female artist. Like, why I can't do it? You Yo. know what I'm saying? Like, am I supposed to be the label that can't sign another female artist because I signed Megan? Like, I that even don't make see no you. sense, especially at a time when women rap is, is taking off. Like, I'll be a fool. You know what I'm saying? Now, mind you, I sign male artists as well. I have three male artists. Nobody talks about it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, other than what we promote, but... Um, we give opportunities to everybody. You just they just decide to zone in. It's it's it's, it's news for the industry. You I know, know you've seen this one, yeah. bro. I even seen further far as the colorism thing. Right. That shit got to be crazy. I haven't seen that. What's that? Somebody said um, you wanted to get a light skinned girl because it would sell more than a dark. <laughs> like I was literally, bro. I swear to God on my yeah, life. Yeah, that's the first time. Not see, and that's the reason why they was like you wanted to go far so far away from Megan Thee Stallion. So. It could maybe, I don't know, gain the, the public's attention or some shit like well, that. Like, what they don't understand is that, you know, with 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 with, with Megan and all those people and, and, and Erica and my artist K on Lisa, I literally, you know, was trying to avoid that type of stuff. After that, after you just don't care about what people say, now it's time to go to the next best talent available. You know what I'm saying? So for all the people that think I signed Martina because she's light skinned and no, you know what I'm saying? That was the next best talent available that we decided to work with. And at the end of the day, uh, yeah, uh, of course, it's nice to work with lookers because, uh, you know, they, they, I ain't going to say they don't have to work as hard. But, they're going to bring you know, their attention. Yeah, it they're going to bring their attention. And we, lookers, yeah. and let's, let's, <laughs> clear, yeah. let's be careful. Not bro. saying that lookers, lookers are don't not lookers. You gotta be light, exactly, light skin exactly, don't make exactly, you exactly. a looker. Like, exactly. But since like, you said the colorism thing, we talking about light and bright skin. But I'm, I, like, I, like, I have no... No, I don't look at that stuff. If you could tell with my other, you know, artists, I've never, I've never, you know, used that as a situation on why I pick people. I, I, I strictly be looking at the talent. I want to say thank you for that. Um, I appreciate that. Um, and I mean that. Yeah. But now I'm off that. Can we talk about you for a second? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take a shot for that. Let's take a shot for talking about you. Come on, come on bro. Man, but you was a shot taker, ain't yeah, you? Yeah, motherfucker. You gonna be able to drive, like, you, like, you gonna listen, be able to drive home? I just want to say. Thank you you. Be a- yeah, I'm good. Nigga. Oh, okay. I'm grown. I'm grown right <laughs> over here. I mean, I know it's- You're going to have to watch him over there. I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I'm used to this snow. I'm from up north. But what I will say is, uh, I appreciate that. A lot of people, they don't they want to get away from the shit that everybody talking about. It don't make sense to me because, honestly, it's wasting that's what time. Hear. It's wasting time. It ain't wasting time to me. I'm the media. No, nigga. I'm saying it's wasting time talking about shit that people don't want to hear about. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So now I want, I want to be selfish. There's some things I want to talk about. I'm glad we got out of the other way. How does it feel, bro? Um, I ask you this once, and it's different. Like, I want to know, when you first started, you said this out your mouth. Man, I'm trying to get in the industry. Right. I'm signing everybody that got a name. I'm trying to sign everybody that got a name. Not even, wait, before I ask you how does it feel, I'm sorry. The liquor talking to me. Before I ask you how, how does it feel, let's get into, what is going through your mind? I'm dropping a bag on you artists. Right. And y'all are saying no. But y'all saying yes to a more fucked up deal. Oh, man. In that moment, if you can take me back before you got to where you at now, when you trying to sign anybody that's coming up and they saying no. Listen, man, I'm giving them 50-50 I'm just doing all kind of crazy percentages, bro. And And they they like, nah, I'm all right. Yeah, they not understanding what's going on, bro. Like, I don't do no shit like that now, you know, because I done linked up with... My consultant people that you, you know, know the business, yeah. Good. But before I'm telling dudes, bro, let's go 50 50. <laughs> let's go, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's do it. I'm you can just, sign me 50 Why you I think Megan you, got a, why doing. you think Megan got a 60 40 profit split deal? Because we just was like, I just want to, I just want to end. I just want to end. I didn't care how I got in, I didn't care how much I lost or how much love I showed, you know what I'm saying. But these people didn't understand this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the hottest songs around Houston. I'm ready to just throw everything. Give them half. I get half. Like, let's just share. They like, nah. You know what I'm saying? We don't want you to be the nigga to get the shot. Why do you think that, though? I just think it's the culture. It's the mind thing with black folks together, man. It's like, you rather go like, like, like you think the Jew dude finna like, uh, let you get, you know what I'm saying? Come up out. You not. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, I just feel like black people just... Had this, I don't know what it is, man. You just afraid to work with them. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me. I I gotta challenge you for that, bro. bro. And and I do this respectfully. Right. I don't agree. I'm gonna tell you why. I feel like what happened is niggas love clout. 
Right. Right. So niggas don't know that 300 is Leo Cohen. A lot of people don't know that. Right. What they see is the people that's on 300. Right. right? They see Yo Gotti, but they don't know who Yo Gotti signed to. They see Rick Ross, but they don't know who Rick Ross signed to. You feel me? So like in respect, I say it ain't that people don't want to work with black people. What right. happened is they see you got a 15 old bitch. I mean, I mean, that shit, all right. But yo, got his shit bigger. You get what I'm saying? I yeah, think that's man. what it is. They want to go with the glam, but they don't really know the. They don't really know the ins and outs of it. Yeah, you you might have you got a point right there because I had a a, a guy I was trying to sign and he just was infatuated with yo Gotti. You know what I'm saying? I get ready to sign him and. Every time he'll be like, well, you know, God is talking about signing me. And I'm like, well, damn, when he going to do it? You know what I'm saying? And never ended up happening. So, yeah, you might be right. But at the end of the day, I still think that if I was a white person coming through or some type of other type of race coming through, to presenting them with all I the stuff it. that I, I presented it. you with, I still think more people would have messed with me. The guys that I actually wanted, you know what I'm talking about? Not to say that I don't want the artist that's here, but like, I, you know, when you coming home, I'm, you know, I'm looking. When you at, first starting, it's yeah, like I'm trying I'm, to get my I, I see. Who, I know who's the hottest artist in Houston. I'm approaching them, treating them with respect, having them meetings with them, doing the dinners, just letting them know, hey, look, it's all about you. They didn't understand the value of just being like having like this, this like uh, carved out situation perfectly for you. You know what I'm saying? Which now you probably under a label or something, and it's a bunch of y'all. You're going to get the little treatment, but the attention that you get from over here, you know what I'm saying? The hands on and just. With my staff, I got a people. I got over like a ten staff people, and we all like dedicated to every artist that's on a label. You know what I'm saying? For no, us, you just dealing with one person at a label and one contact person every now and then. You hear from them, so and so. You know, this is the conversation I wanted to have, right? Because yeah. it's more about you and it's more about people learning. And um, it's dope because if you look at it, right, just right. our our history as African Americans. Honestly, it's nothing new, right? Right. And if we go outside of the the, the industry, right, a lot of times. It's so many triggers that trigger us in the African-American culture. Like, for example, we self-sabotage a lot. Right. Why? Because we're not used to something good happening. We're right. used to somebody fucking us over. We're used to it being a trick. So when we when it's in our face and it's something good for us, it's like, hey man, I don't trust this motherfucker. What they say, they use black folks to get the slaves. You know mm. what I'm saying? They use black. When they was capturing the slaves, they was using black folks to do it. We were the only people to do that to our and people. It's so it's like that really has like an effect on how things are today. It trickles you know down, bro. Yeah. It's sad because, you know, like even down to the- I hate to get all like, now, you know no, what I'm saying? Get like that. into it because that's the shit I want to talk happened, about. All that other shit that's, is for the goofies and for the internet. Yeah, this is the shit yeah, I'm trying to talk about. Yeah. You feel me? Because like what happens is honestly, bro, even back during slavery, bro, right. like- we, we hating on people that's black, but that's right. fair skinned in us because they in a house, right? right. But not understanding that every, every level come with different devil. Right. Like she might be light skinned and she might be a house nigga, but what happened is, what you're not understanding is that, that quote unquote house nigga got problems that she don't even got problems with, that she don't mm. even have to worry about. Think about it. They getting, they, 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 they getting raped by slave owners. They get beat by the, 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 the husband of the slave, by, right. by the wife of the slave owner. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now they having a baby by the slave owner. Now we got my life. All I'm saying is yeah. a lot of times people judge on the outside of what's going in, not what's going on, and really not understanding. You right. get what I'm saying? So like nah, I'm I with you. Yeah. And that's yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Can we take a call? Man? <laughs> that's that's right. the conversation yeah. I'm trying to have. You feel me? Like <laughs> we have we talking, we I'm talk listen, <laughs> we talking Megan and Stoggin and all that shit. And cool is that's what the and that's what people want to talk and hear about. But I wanna yeah. talk about real shit. You nah, feel me? for sure, because I feel like I'm a realist, but you know, like I just look at stuff like that, man. Like, hey man, at the, have you ever seen the movie Twelve Years a Slave. Did Y'all you seen ever, that? I gotta see that. Y'all seen that? I did you ever, do you remember the part when the black dude was up on the stage with him? He was like, "Yeah, when my master come, shit, it's gonna be up. I'm gonna tell him about you. We good. We gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? When master came I and mean, called his name, what he do? That nigga said, "Peace, nigga." <laughs> And it's crazy, but that nigga burned bro, that. So it's it, kind of like a how to, that's how shit is. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, like it's like nigga, like man, hey, fuck that. Like you know what I'm saying? Cause like happened with me with the Megan the Stallion shit. That's kind of like how what happened is like Master came and you were like shit, fuck you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, we out. And that's kind of like exactly what how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And it's saying? crazy. They say, what's the old saying? They say like you know what you what feel me? like yeah. so many slaves would have been free if they just knew that they were slaves. Bro, I think it was something like that. Like a lot of people. Didn't get free because they didn't even know they were slaves. Like, yeah, they because didn't, they like, didn't have a mindset to understand that that I'm a slave. Right. Yeah. So Can we take yeah. a shot, bro? Come on, man. Yeah, you can be take a shot. Take yeah. a we talking some shit, man. Hey, um, want to talk to you about this? 
wrote some notes down. You play MLB, right. Major League Baseball. What makes you go that direction? Because <clears throat> you play other sports. I played other sports, but I had an uncle that played. Uh, I played. He played Double A uh, baseball. And uh, he played in the minor league. He got up to double A. He didn't make it to the major leagues. When he come home, you know what I'm saying? Tell me about everything. And um, he started like throwing to me in the front yard one day. Literally, this is a true story. He fucking threw the ball to me one time. I hit it, and he was like, he told me straight up. He was like, "Hey man, I knew right from then that you wasn't supposed. To, it wasn't supposed to go like that. The ball." He said, "So I threw it again harder because I didn't. I couldn't believe you hit the ball like that. Threw it harder. Bam. Same result." He said. He say when I, he say, he say he threw two pitches to me and I can remember it. He threw two pitches to me, hit both of them. Motherfucker grabbed me by my arm, put me in his car, drove me down the street, and signed me up for the local baseball team. Uh, <laughs> and that's what made you do baseball. Yeah. So you did at that moment. You wasn't thinking about the money and how it could save your family. Nah, man. I was probably like his, I was probably like seven years old. But now, but yeah. you know now though. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I can assume that you know, like oh, yeah. when it comes to the money and the different prof- professional sports, that Major League Baseball is well. Com- the, looking at the numbers, is number two, right? Highest paying sports, NBA being number one, right? You know that now, right? Yeah, yeah. We was number one, but the NBA with LeBron, them they've been doing a real good job of like with they uh, uh union and stuff, getting them boys like them contracts. So, um, let me ask you this: yeah. How easy did baseball come to you? Psh, easy. Mm-hmm. All right. I want to read some numbers to you, and I want to get your opinion on it. When it comes to African Americans in the U- United States, right, 19.5% of us are below the poverty line. So if we had to put it in perspective, that's one out of every five black people are mm-hmm. below the poverty line. I'm a, I'm a keep, I know we've been drinking, but stay with me. Right. 74% of the NBA is African American. Right. Also, 69% of the NFL is African American. Gotcha. It's only, one second, one second, I'm reading it, 13%. So, of 2020, 2020, 7%, which was the all-time low, of the Major League Baseball players on opening day, opening roster, We're was black. black. Yeah. So, usually what happens is so, normal. So, is that 7% now? It's, they say normally it's 13%, but in 2020, it was 7%. Yeah, see, it was, it was 9% when I was there. Mm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, let me keep going. Look at this. So, majority of the NBA is black. Majority of the NFL is black. What that tells me is so many black people want to play these sports, right? Before, you said, before we said it, at one point in time, the MLB made the most money. Now right. it's number two. That's yeah. still good. Look at this, though. Let's break it down. When it comes to NFL, it's only uh, it's 6.5% of high school kids go to... To play a um, NCAA, out of that six point five, one point two percent of college players go to the NFL. I need y'all to stay with me. So we only t- looking at that one point two percent of college players in the NFL. I mean, in, the, in college, go to the NFL. Damn. When it comes to NBA, right? I'm sorry, I just want to look at these numbers. It's three percent of players from high school go to college. Only one percent of college players. Make it pro. Yeah, I believe it. Now watch this though. Just stay with me. Stay with me. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to draw only, this on. Only 500 players in the NBA. Now when it comes to baseball, and this is what I want to. This is what I want to talk to you about. Wait. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a look at this. Ah, uh, here we go. 12 percent. Well, now I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Five point six percent of high school boys go to play in NCAA at an NCAA institution. We some African Americans though. Out of that twelve percent, ten percent of African Americans or ten percent of pe- boys that play in an NCAA baseball go and play pro. I say that to say, if you could really break it down for our brothers, right? Like you say, baseball came to you easy. Right. There's a one percent chance. From college, from a Division One or NCAA college to go pro in baseball, and and no, in football and basketball, yeah. it's roughly one percent. You telling me it's ten percent in baseball of baseball players yeah. that go from college to pros, right? As African Americans, we always talk about breaking the chains. We always talking about um, 
uh, be a syst- uh, systemic racism and right, right. Um, generational curses. If you could explain to our black boys and our black brothers out there why they should take in more consideration of playing baseball, baseball. you know what I'm saying? See, this is the thing. Like you say, it's a 10% chance. So meaning that it's a better chance for them to succeed and they don't even know they it, They don't right? even know it. This is why they don't pursue it. It's because, you know, uh, when you turn on the TV and you see a, a baseball commercial or you see a, a, a endorsement or whatever, it's, it's, you never see nobody that look like you mm. that you can relate to. When you turn on basketball, you can see a Most, LeBron like I said, James. 74%? You can see a 69% Steph basketball. Curry or whatever. Somebody, oh, that's, that's me right there. You know what I'm saying? But when you see baseball and black kids look at it, they don't see them nowhere. And the crazy part is they have the athletes – that they can actually do that with. You know what I'm saying? That a black kid can say, but they don't promote the black athletes like they do the white ones. You know what I'm saying? So it's so you don't even think it's black people playing. Damn. And then the ones that you do see, they Spanish guys. So you get in this Latino community and you think it's a black guy and then he's speaking Spanish. So it's like, you don't even think. You, it's about representation. In, in your mind, you think, man, black people don't even play that shit. It's just like when um with golf, like me, like I would never try to play golf because I never... Saw a nigga like me playing golf. So, so and a nigga you, that we did see you, like us claimed that he wasn't us. Exactly. So, if you from the hood, you know what I'm saying? The only way you're going to like see, um, you're going to want to just pursue something, you got to see somebody that remind you of that. Now, mind you, when I was in Tampa, I played in Tampa Bay, St. Pete. You know what I'm saying? A lot of little ghettos around there. Hey, man, those little dudes used to come to the games and just be like, you know what I'm saying? They could see somebody that remind them of them, dressed like them a little bit, got a little swag like them, you know, and then it's athletic like them, you know what I'm talking about? And then that makes a person want to play, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And then when they realize your salaries and stuff, they like you would never know that a guy make $35 million a year playing baseball, a black person, you know what I'm saying? Like Because why? The game teaches us to be low-key. So he's not going to even publicize. He's not going to even... He, this nigga might be making $30 million a year. He probably don't even got Instagram, you know right. what I'm saying? And that's how they train us in baseball mm-hmm. to keep that low-key type of, type of style. And, you know, a, a young ghetto child probably would never know that, it, that, that that's even possible, you and know what I'm saying? And that's why and I brought up... that's why when they see a person like me, like, for instance... I'm in a rap game. You talking to me about rapping shit. Motherfuckers go Google me and stuff, and they see this, they be like, yo, you, you fucking play baseball? <laughs> this nigga was a professional baseball like, player. You know what I'm saying? They be like, bro, like, that shit just, you know what I'm saying? It like baffles their mind, you know what I'm saying? But it's like too late for them, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't really know. But a younger person could see, and that's why I'm like kind of like, I know I had an obligation to really get back into baseball and just kind of have camps, which I will, but... I just was so dedicated. I wanted to be part of the music industry so bad that I wanted to do this first. I have a son that's about to get drafted this year, you know what I'm saying? In the first round, he's following my footsteps. I know I'm finna have to get back into the game. So a a dude like me really is supposed to get more proactive into more like camps and stuff like that. But I know that even if I do get proactive, I might see two or five black kids out there. You know what I'm saying? And for me... I need to see like a hundred black kids out there. You know what I'm saying? And I know that's just not gonna happen. So I went to an area where I can like help black people. But man, baseball is one of those things that if black people knew, like, like for instance, the Negro Leagues back in the day. You ever yeah. have you ever even seen any movies like Negro Leagues and stuff like that? Back in those days, you know, they had whole it was segregated. So you got full stadiums. Full of black people. I can't even imagine being at a baseball game, a professional baseball game, with nothing but black people in the stands. But this is how it used to be in like the 30s or the 40s or some shit like that. Owners start making too much money. Uh, major leagues like, oh hell no, nah. we gotta we gotta migrate this shit. You see Jackie Robinson, all that kind of stuff happen. But you know, um, if black, so that tells me at a certain point in time, black people love baseball. I don't understand why they can't like it now. If they were able to get back to those type of days where, you know, they just enjoy the sport and black people understand what they can do, I just think it'll just be real beneficial for the culture. And I think, like you said, is the representation. I think the representation yeah. is super important. Right. From, because, like I said, we look at the numbers, right? Right. 74% of the, N- the NBA is made up of African Americans. 69% right. of the NFL is made up of African Americans, but only 13 to 7% of the MLB is made of African Americans, but we talking about breaking these. His, Man, the crazy thing curses. about baseball, like, like for things like I to give you an example, it's nine positions on the field, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
like it, like catcher, like the catcher. You know what that is? The nigga yeah. do catch the ball. <laughs> yeah, you know he do the, the. So it's not one. <laughs> it's not one black catcher in the whole league. Mm, mm, mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, bro, this is the United States. You, we come from the slaves who had to, you know what I'm saying, be with the with the strongest slaves, to be athletes, to do all this stuff, to gene, you know what I'm saying? You mean to tell me out of all this shit in the United States, it's not one black person that can play catch That can catch the ball? That can catch the ball. And, th <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? You not, not one, bro. So for me, shit like that is what irritate me, you know what I'm saying? Because I know that they just don't understand what's available to them, you know what I'm saying? And they just need to know, bro, like, Come on, bro. Like it's nine positions out there. You know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers. You can make a hundred million dollars at every position on this fucking field. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? More. So the fact that it's not one just tells me that they just it's not something that they want us doing. But we have to like notice what you know uh, what's available to us so that we can you know succeed in life and you know provide. Being that baseball is no, is number two on the all time making money list, right? Right. Um, and it used to be number one. Uh, what would you tell like our African American brothers that's like yo that's that's choosing sport and how would you like I don't know promote baseball tell them to encourage them to pursue baseball? I don't know, man. All I can say is look, bro. If you dominating in football or basketball, now you finna come play where it's nothing. Like you know how hard it is to play against niggas. You know what I'm saying? I mean, screw, screw nah, me. nigga, no, we good. Oh, I got okay. you, bro. I, like we here. Bro, listen, <laughs> it's if you fine. play sports before, playing against niggas is like one of the hardest things to do. Basketball is only 500, 500 of the best players in the whole world. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be cold. Football, you you dealing against the best niggas around. You know what I'm talking about? Baseball, I ain't saying. That the white boys ain't ain't good, but I'm just saying. But everybody knows you know what I'm talking like, about. Like, come on, bro. Like, I'm just, fuck, I'm just taking another shot because you want some bullshit. I'm just no. Saying. White um, motherfuckers ain't athletic as us. I'ma say you don't have to say, it, bro. I got you. I got you. I'm a, bro. They they make bro. movies like Get Out for a reason. Nah, I'm, just, I'm saying, just saying, like they want. They some what good. We they, got. they got some good baseball players. But what I'm saying, bro, if y'all if you take I'm half with my of black these, brothers, half all of these way, football, always. how half of these football players is in the NFL. If you take a third of these niggas and they try to come play baseball, trust me. They probably will be in the What? Game. They will be killing, bro. They, and will, they will be make more money. Way more money, bro. Look at the black and athlete. The I'm black the say. black athlete in America is the highest paid, is the most expensive, you know what I'm saying? In the in the in the thing. Everybody knows that. That's why we keep them away. You want to get these uh lagging guys, you give them like Ten thousand dollars when they sign for their shoes and shit. You know what I'm saying? They come over here and be these big stars, and you make all this money off of them. You know, you know, black dudes. We come in. Hey man, you gotta come on with you it. Come strong, you gotta come you know smart, smart motherfucker. Yeah. Right. So it's like, why go through that when you can go to these Latin countries and you can get a dude that's built just like me or you? You know what I'm saying? For the low, you know what I'm saying? So that's the game. You know mm. what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, man, black folks need to just the kids just need to know. That, hey, bro, stick with baseball. If you know, if you if you a football player, I feel like every football player should play baseball. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you big, you small. If you if you can play football, you can play baseball, and it's just that. Look at look at fucking the quarterback from Seattle. What's his name? See, uh, Russell Wilson. Yeah, Russell Wilson, bro. He, you know what I'm saying? He played both. Like I seen a lot of people play both. I played both. I signed. I was in. The, I was in. The, I was one of the top quarterbacks coming out of uh, high school in 1999. I signed with Nebraska when they was at the height of they height of they shit when they was winning national championship. I should have had a, a Heisman Trophy. But you make me feel good, bro. Cause I ain't gonna lie. I be talking about my age. I be old as shit to these young niggas. And you like, I'm coming out of high school at 1999. Yeah. I just want to put that out there. But nah, for sure. But know. but listen, I was for real the top quarterback coming out. And um, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like if I was able to play football and baseball, like, yeah, I mean, we all feel like we the nigga that can only do it, but that's not really true. You mm. know what I'm saying? If all of them can do it. If you were this athletic to play football, bro, trust me, you athletic enough to play baseball. And it's it's you know public record, but can you yeah. put it out there? You left baseball and how much money did you leave baseball with? Man, I left baseball with over two hundred million dollars. Mm, 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 mm. And so, uh, you know, and that's another thing. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't understand. It's going to pay you. It's going to pay how you weigh. <laughs> Facts. Yo, um, before we get out of here, yeah. uh, this is because I know there's so many, like, up-and-coming artists, producers, and things like that looking at you. When you first started, man, I want everybody that's hot. <laughs> you got some shit under your belt now. You got Megan Thee Stallion. You chose that. And you spoke in one of your interviews. You said, yo, I wanted to do big old freaks. They wanted to do something else. Right. You got... Africa Banks, right? Right now, from where you started to where you at now, when it comes to choosing these artists, how are you choosing them? How, how are you making your decision? 
the, the same way, pretty much. I look for the talent. I look for the, you know what I'm saying? You like, can't say the same way, because before you said you was making, you were looking for everybody that was hot. It ain't the nah, same no more. It, it, it ain't that I'm looking for everybody that's hot. I still look for everybody that's hot, but I still look for the, the talent. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We have to have the talent. The numbers don't really like involve me too much because I have a system here that I know once I plug them into my system, the numbers going to be where they need to be. So all I do is look for like maybe if they have like a song already that I can use or like a, uh, or, like you know what I'm saying? I just feel like they can work good with the producers that I have. And then I'm like, okay, if I feel like it's a good fit, then I'm going to roll with it. All right, so I feel like again I told I think I um told Martina this. Uh, I feel like that was a very industry answer. What do you like? Fuck the. If I feel like it's good and what, what do you mean? What, what do I like, like? What is something that you looking for in an artist that's Man, like damn? I, nah, I, fuck I just, what everybody else I, say. I want I, that. I just look for the star. Quality. What's, you know, what's the star? The aura. When, you know what so I'm saying? So what's the aura? What, the aura what is, is like when you walk into a room. Like you know what I'm saying? Certain people when they walk into a room immediately. Tell me what it looked like. I need to know exactly. It just like, look like, looking it at just, you. I can change. I can it just, transform. It just, it just look like how you just need to like stare. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's like you can feel it. The energy is like when they walk in. It's like confidence. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like you immediately know. One thing I can say about Megan Thee Stallion is whenever she walked in the room, like. It's like, it's like what makes what makes somebody confident is the jury is it the is it the I just think yeah I just think they just know who they are they know how they make people feel they know how they can you know what I'm saying like just like make a person feel I think that's what it's all about like you can walk in the room if you can be polite you can just they they notice when they like make a person feel a certain way and then they indulge in it you know what I'm saying like all that type of stuff how you feeling right now I feel like shoot Hey, I'm you feel good. good. I'm talking, man. I feel like the, I feel the, like the, I done had about seven shots. That's so is it I fair to like. say I made you feel good? Yeah, you did. So if I was a rapper, would you sign me? I wouldn't sign you until I heard your music. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you go and do your thing in front of me right now. Nah, See, nah, that's the thing. No. See, them. with these drinks, I probably wouldn't want to hear your music. But now I'm like, shit. What you got, man? Freestyle for so a nigga. It, so shit. the drink make you more hit me. Loosen up. You know what right, I'm nah, saying? Nah, it will. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. Shit. <laughs> no, I'm good. I ain't gonna rap for you, bro. I ain't about to do no dumb I shit. Like, hey, about you don't gotta worry about what's up, big dog. Nah, you don't gotta worry about what I do to artists. I tell them, hey, oh, you, oh, okay. Well, what's up? Shit, go. You know what I'm saying? But have you ever? So honestly, because I feel like I seen a lot. Of niggas do that. Have you ever really told an artist go? You liked it, and you signed him? No, but the thing. So is, I would have. <laughs> but I'm just saying, this that's not to say that if the nigga was hard, Shout out I to wouldn't the do it. You see what I'm saying? I just had ran to the nigga who can do it. Nigga said now, no. <laughs> I'm really like nah, but I'm just saying if a nigga was in front of me and just oh, and that shit was hard, you would you would consider it? I got to and I'm gonna look at my partners. I'm gonna say shit. They go. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna be like, hey homie, let me go and lock in with you. I'm gonna holler at you. You know what mm. I'm saying? Shit, and it's just that. Like, I'm, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna keep it real. If you hard, you hard. One thing I can't do, like, I can't hate on a real talent. You know what I'm saying? Even if I don't like the person. You know what I'm saying? Well, if they talent with this music shit, because I know how hard it is, and I know that you have to really be touched by God or gifted by something to do it, that when I see it, I just be like, all right. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. 100%, man. I appreciate yeah. it, though. I thank yeah. you for uh, sitting down. I appreciate the interviews. I appreciate the time with your artists. I appreciate the time with you. Right. Uh, um, let people know how they can follow you. If they want to tap into you, if they want to tap in, what you send you some music, how they can do all that. Uh, just, um, uh, what's the what's the email we send it Nigga to? Nigga got that cost amigos. Niggas forgot everything. But the thing is, uh, you, can <laughs> you can follow me at uh, 1501 certified ENT. Um, I mean, uh, what you say? Yeah. <laughs> What is it? He said at G. 1501 certified ENT.com. You know, follow me on the gram. What's the email? Look, he said at Gmail. What is it? 1501 certified. What's the email? Uh, oh, uh, certified 1501. No, the email is, uh, what's the email? <laughs> what is it? Submit.music. Yeah, submit.music. Submit.music at 1501 ENT.com. Y'all follow sentence, y'all music there. We actually do go through our emails and listen and check. I know a lot of people uh, don't check their stuff, but we do because that's the only way uh, any label is going to function. We have to find like little stuff like that to keep us going, you know? Hey, again, man, I appreciate you, man. Uh, conversation series, Mr. J. Hill, Carl Crawford. There's nothing else we got to say. It's a wrap. I got to take a piss. We out. All right, me too. Woo.